Okay, um, so um, I want to start by saying thank you to the organizers for, um, for the invitation. This is my first time here. Um, so the work I'm going to present is about, um, actually it's about end user, an end user tool. And this is an end user application of uh, semantic technology um, to the point in, in which semantics can help, right? So um, it's not a real case for semantic technology because I use semantics for as long as it helps, helps me to um, help the end user. Um, so, a little bit of background about my work, about this, this specific work. It is that um, this comes from my interest in, in semantics for documents, um, in understanding how is a document related to another document, um, particularly in life sciences, and not just limiting this relation, uh, the, the uh, set of documents to uh, published papers, but uh, more broadly speaking, any kind of document in, in the biomedical domain. Um, so I also wanted to know uh, how could I measure the semantic similarity across biomedical documents, how, cat, how could I use annotation for something uh, practical, like for instance information retrieval, um, and, when I, um, and, and, and for this specific piece of work, it also has to do with uh, my interest in lab information management systems. Um, and electronic um, lab information management systems. Uh, why? Well, quite easily because um, every researcher, uh, every, every wet, wet, uh, wet biologist, they always use some kind of uh, lab information management system, whether it is uh, uh, spread at Excel or um, uh, distributed you know, um, storage device or anything like that, or more sophisticated um, electronic, life, um, electronic uh, lab information management systems. That's, that's the way they kind of uh, deal with, with data. Um, so um, we decided to focus on experimental protocols because experimental protocols are the documents that they use to represent what they do. So uh, it doesn't matter whether you're talking about a very large setting uh, with a lot of money or a very uh, small laboratory with very little resources, they always have um, experimental protocols. They always have to follow experimental protocols. Uh, big Pharma, um, more than anybody else, have uh, a lot of experimental protocols and document management systems because without without the uh, uh, documentation for any given experiment, they cannot patent. So good documentation means and translates into being able to patent, that means money. Um, the other thing is that um, I, I saw that uh, data, and I have seen that here, um, data, everybody says that data must be available. Um, the problem is, or as I see the, the main issue here, is that People are depositing data in data repositories, but uh, there is no context for the data being deposited, meaning that um, you cannot really replicate any kind of experiment just by getting the data from Array Express or getting data from Dryad or any other repository. I mean, it doesn't matter whether it's just life sciences, the same situation as in psychology and other, other um, areas uh, of, um, of science. Um, so, um, is this, this is not the first approach to experimental protocols. There was one by Larissa, Larissa Zulotova. She um, made, she built an ontology for representing experiments, and then she focused on experimental protocols. Um, the, 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 the main difference between her approach and, and the approach we, we are taking it is that um, it is true that we are, um, we are a very knowledge intensive approach, but we are also using a lot of NLP methods so that we can be sure that our representation of experimental protocols is rooted in um, what I call the real reality, meaning published experimental protocols and not just the take or the view of one person on what an experimental protocol is. So uh, for those of you who are not familiar with experimental protocols, um, this is pretty much what an experimental protocol looks like. This is, um, they may come from a PDF, but they may also come from a lab information management system. They may come from uh, photos that people take from um, real manuscript uh, lab, lab notebooks. Uh, they usually have all kind of data types, the same kind of data types that you have been uh, talking about here. Um, they all have that. So in essence, they are pretty much papers. The, the only real difference is that experimental protocols, um, they have 
real workflows, not the kind of workflows that are only computational workflows, like the kind of workflows that you have in Taverna or in, or in my experiment, but the kind of workflows that biologists do actually follow in their, in their daily life. Um, so currently what we have in experimental protocols is a lot of semi-structured information and a lot of unstructured information, which is very difficult to mine because, um, because of, the, uh, because of uh, where, the, where the actual protocol comes from. So the PDF is not easy to mine. Um, very often um, experimental protocols are, as I said before, just uh, manuscript annotations on, on a real physical um, notebook. Um, so the motivation for, for this work was um, pretty much how uh, why do we need to formalize and extract information from, from our third protocols? Well, apart from the, everything that I have just said, because we also wanted to have a lot of information management system that could deal with this kind of document so that it could recommend uh, the kind of workflow or the kind of, um, the kind of experimental protocol that you could follow, given your uh, specifics. For instance, the kind of samples that you have, the kind of instruments that you have, the kind of expertise that you have in your lab. So, um, and also, we, we also wanted to have um, information retrieval that, that could lead to um, more meaningful results. Not just, uh, uh, I mean, not just, you know, the, the typical result that comes from PubMed, that you search for something and you usually get, uh, here is your first thousand hits, and then you have to go one by one, so you get just bored of looking into abstracts and you end up picking up the first five. Um, and the kind of questions that we want to support, it's, uh, for instance, this one. Find um, all protocols for DNA extraction that have been used in Orisa Sativa that are suitable for uh, processing a large number of samples with a low execution time. It's very specific, very, very, very granular, but this is the kind of things that, that people work in labs with. Um, so our approach is, is, is basically based on semantics and a mix of semantics and natural language processing. Um, and a little bit of social networks, because we saw that um, there is one common feature um, in, 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 in laboratories, and it is that they all share, the, the very first thing that they share are the experimental protocols, because they represent what they do. So they always, whenever someone new joins the, the lab, they always share the experimental protocols with that person, because that makes their lives easier. Um, <clears throat> So um, with the mix between semantics and, and NLP, we want to uh, retrieve information from experimental protocols. Um, our approach facilitates interoperability between the experimental protocol as a document and data living in the web. For instance, um, data being deposited in Dryad or any other uh, data repository. Um, um, our approach is also based on an exhaustive analysis of experimental protocols. This is pretty much manual a manual analysis of experimental protocols. Um, the, um, our approach has two layers. One is the um, ontology layer, which is basically semantics. It's an ontology and the use of ontologies. And the other layer has to do with the NLP that we are doing with the semantics what, that we have defined. So the, um, the uh, smart protocols ontology is, is very, very modular. Um, it has three main components. Uh, it has the document um, component because experimental protocols are essentially documents. It has a workflow com component and it has an annotation or domain knowledge component which we are used for which we are using the annotation ontology. Um, we investigated uh, all of the existing uh, ontologies and, and metadata um, formats for um, describing documents and we ended up adopting some of the terminology that from, from those uh, vocabularies and ontologies. We also did uh, an extensive investigation in what has to do with workflows, and, and we saw that um, although there is a extensive research in workflows in bioinformatics, for bioinformatics workflows, uh, there was very little done for what has to do with uh, the kind of workflows that uh, biologists do actually work with in the laboratory. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that, that our um, um, smart protocols ontology supports um, it is easy to transform, to use the ontology, or to transform some parts of the ontology into gas gears so that you can use them in natural language processing tools like, for instance, GATE. Um, our ontology is fully annotated um, because that makes our life easier when it comes to um, maintaining the ontology. Um, right now, two weeks ago, 
um, the latest uh, count on the ontology um, gave a, a, a number that really surprised me because we ended up having more than 5,000 terms now. And just uh, I just want to say this because last year we we only had like uh, just like a hundred or so on, or so terms. So the NLP work that we have been doing to enrich the ontology did actually pay off. Um, <clears throat> our ontology is interoperable with biomedical ontology, and, and it also supports the generation of link open data for experimental protocols. So the, 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 the experimental protocol is something that we are representing uh, using this ontology, and we are generating link data so that uh, we interoperate um, in a more granular way with other data sources. <clears throat> so um, when we started this work, it was basically manual work over more than 300 experimental protocols. Um, and then we started to use some um, NLP methods so that we could enrich the ontology. Um, we ended up with this, which is the uh, document aspect of this work. And we also have the uh, workflow representation of the uh, experimental protocol for which we ended up using P-Plan, the P-Plan ontology. Um, the goal here is to accurately um, retrieve um, um, very specifics from experimental protocols. For instance, sample, instrument, rigid, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the NLP layer uh, um, is, is consuming the semantic layer, um, basically using guest tiers and using some rules for extracting meaningful parts of a speech from experimental protocols, like, for instance, instructions. Um, and um, so um, the, as, as, as the work evolved and we saw that uh, there was the need not just for an ontology, but there, there was also the need for a minimal information uh, that could represent experimental protocols. And that's what, that's what we ended up with. We ended up with uh, sample, instrument, region, and objective, which basically describes um, the experimental protocol. It is an extension of, um, it, 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 it accurately describes uh, the experimental protocol without the need to expose the content and the specifics of the experimental protocol. And this is important because people are reluctant to share experimental protocols if they know that this is going to be publicly available for everybody to see. They just want to share the minimal metadata that, that, that makes their work visible. Um, this is our NLP layer. We are using this minimal information, and we can now we can quite easily identify um, the from the minimal information the sample instrument region in actions. Um, we can, for instance, search for what bacteria have been used in protocols for um, persistent serum isolation. So we we identify sample, specimen, instrument, regions, and objective um, objective of the of the actual protocol. Um, so this presents our approach, but it's pretty much what I have described. You may can use of uh, an instructor uh, provided by the ontology and um, NLP rules for extracting uh, meaningful parts of the speech. Um, we also support um, sample um, instrument regent objective based registration for protocols that uh, exist already, published as PDF, or for protocols that come from our own platform. Um, so. Sorry, yeah, <laughs> I know. Okay, so I just wanted to conclude with uh, some of the challenges that we have come up with. So, um, uh, biomedical ontologies are mostly flat. That impacts our uh, capacity to do meaningful extraction using um, um, NLP um, based on, on the ontologies, just on the ontologies, like for instance, inferring from, from entity recognition. That's not, not really possible, or it has been very hard for us. Um, and that's why we have been having to generate uh, rules of extraction over our NLP layer. Um, okay. Okay. So that's that's that was pretty much what I'm. So if, if there is any question, just uh, ask. Yeah. 